All right, this is Daryl Martin with ApexInvesting.com doing another series on be the sniper or be the target when you're trading. It's your choice, and if you're going to be the sniper or be the target, so make it today. Join us right now at ApexInvesting.com forward slash boot camp for a free 30-day trial with full access to our trade group training and tools and see what it's all about. No credit card required. Check us out on Facebook. Check us out on YouTube. And we will be happy to answer any questions you have and help you out and get you going. All right, with that being said, uh, let me go ahead and, you know, go in. We've got disclosures. And today we're going to do reviews. So how's that sound to everybody on the webinar right now? We're going to go in and we're going to look at some simplicity reviews. And we're also going to check out some sniper reviews as well. But uh, it was a big moving day, so uh, two big things causing that is Congress being locked down and the VP being picked. So first, just to go over simplicity, make sure you all have this down. And remember, you can do this in the room or you can get the... The data set up, it's under section 16, all the uh, reviews and the reviews I've done, the set, the step-by-step -step walkthrough is on the Bootcamp Sniper page. Okay, so if you feel like I'm going too fast for you because you just you know, just joined us, reminder, everything I have is on the Sniper page, step-by-step, -step, I go slow, I work through each piece for you, okay? And this system helps you define your entry, your stop, your take profit, all that fun stuff. But, um, let's see here. Let's start. We just had a really nice simplicity short. But this morning, I started early in the trade room. I came in, and we just had some monster moves. And kids started back school today, so I was on. And early, as you can see here, looking at 7.30. We go over here, and we got angle down, angle down. Didn't break the low, so no entry. No entry. Finally, we get an entry right here, which puts our stop right here. Okay? So this is our setup bar, because this is the first time that two bars angled down and the low was broke. Got it? And on this, not a, it's not just an entry. We actually have some room, at least until the wall. And we also are coming off of, you know, some major levels up here. So after consolidating quite a bit on this flux pivot, we finally get a you know little mini breakdown and then we get a big break right here around seven o'clock. So when that breaks down, it goes on down. We're waiting for it to close above, not at, not on, but above the solid line. As you can see, it did not do that. Came really close right here. And we leave our stop. This is a big question I've seen a lot of people have is whenever the solid line flips color, do we care? We don't care. We just leave our stop in the same place. So if it closes above this, we get out, but it did not do that. And whenever it flips back over, obviously it has to get above us, and then we can start trailing with it again. Does that make sense to everybody? Like whenever the solid line flips to green, you just leave your stop right there. So, and that's if it closes above that level right so it's a close above not a touch of the level any questions on that about how we get our stop goes from here to here the solid line color is important yeah so if it turns to green we're just going to leave our stop where it's at if it closes above that level and it turns back to red, it's got to get above us before we can continue to trail it down. Okay, so we're trailing, we're trailing, we're trailing. And this trail goes forward and backwards to move with the volatility of the market. And at a huge run down, till finally it closed above the solid red line right there. So first thing out of the gate, we had a move of 26 points. So, which, you know, four ticks a point, $20 a point, would have been, you know, a nice, pretty nice move, right? 
four hundred and well more than that, like five hundred and ten dollars, twenty dollars. So, and if, uh, if somebody says it's seven twenty one, it closed above your line. Well, actually, the line was right here at seven twenty one. It didn't close above it. This is the close of the bar. Let me zoom in for you. So here's the line, and there's the open and the close. Now, the wick went above it, but it did not close above it. So if it would have closed above it, then when it closed, I would have got out. So if it turns green, put the stop above the solid green line, hard stop. If it hits above, nope. If it turns green, if it closes above the solid red line, then I would get out. So it's got to close above the line. The hard stop would be about five points away. So we have a hard stop about five points away, and then we close it immediately if it closes above the line. Does that make sense? So there is a hard stop about five points away, just so you don't get killed in case the market just flies. But we want to give it room. That's the whole idea. And trailing is to give the market plenty of room to oscillate around so you can actually get those really big ones. So it's always about the close above. And I thought that was a really good example because it turned green and it's sort of like, what do I do when it turns green? Do I trail it? Do I get out? What do I do? So you just stay in and you wait for it to move or to, for it to hit a target if you want it to. I don't use any ATM for simplicity. I just hit sell market. I go and I manually put on a stop and about five points above and then I'm dragging it, dragging it, dragging it with it. And then if it closes above it, I just hit close. So, cause you can't, there's really no way to build a ATM that goes up and down, up and down, up and down, right? Um, I'm con still confused about entry. I'm always getting in late. Can you go over this? Yeah. So what we're looking for is two of the, the red and the red solid line and the red dash line. Okay. To be angling down. Technically you could do what's called a early entry here. Usually the red solid line is above the dash line, but you could actually, you could have entered here. Which, I mean, would have made a nice, you know, difference on your P&L. So you could have actually entered one tick below the low of this bar. Alright? But, let's say you missed that early entry, which is, like, it doesn't always happen like that, but early entry. Then now what you're waiting for is the red and dash line to both angle down. Well, here they're both angling down. See, that one's angling down. That one's angling down. But it didn't break the low of this bar. And then they're angling up here. Now they're angling down here, both of them. That one and that one. And it didn't break the low. So no entry, because it has to break it on the very next bar. Then they're angling down here. And this next bar... Right here, technically, we would have got in one tick below that bar, right there. So, does that help out, Gerald? So, both are angling down, and the low of the setup bar, which is when both are angling down, the very next bar, you get in when the low is broken. You're waiting for the low of the setup bar to be broken. This 30 second setup bar.
So just to verify, you can enter early on the open close of the next bar when you see the lines of the same color cross each other. No, I didn't say cross each other. The early entry was when both lines were angling down. See how they both are red and they're both angling down? Do you see that? It's just it happens to be early because the solid line is below the dotted line, which usually it's the opposite for a short. Okay, so how come the bar before that wasn't a setup bar? This bar was a setup bar. They were both angling down. But did this bar's low get broken by the very next bar? Yeah, that entry would have been... right there like this entry ended up being right here so it's it's very important that the low of the setup bar is broken or that becomes no longer a valid entry so on the first bar the lines aren't pointing up see they're both angling down do you see that Michael And the, you know, the third red bar, one is angling up, one is angling down. So therefore, that's why we don't consider the third bar. So the question was, why don't we consider the third, third bar? Exactly. So David says, it has to break the low of the next bar after the setup bar, not a few bars away. Correct. It has to break the low of the next bar after the setup bar. So if the potential setup bar is low, it's not broken, it is no longer a valid setup bar. Exactly, Ronald, you got it. Let's see here. Let me go up. So what of questions right here? This is good though. That's the whole point why we do reviews. Can I review why I'm not getting out at 719? Because my stop is if it closes above the solid red line. It's probably not best to use that color. So right here, it had to close above that. It did not close above it. It went above it, but it did not close above it. How many ticks do you keep? I usually keep it about three to five points above the solid line. So I'll keep it like, I'd keep it right here. And then if it closed above it, then I just hit close. And that'd cancel my stops and it would also um, close out the trade. Let's see here. Yeah, NTA does have options for using the trend line to trail your stops. The problem is we don't trail it on the trend line. Remember, we trail it when it closes above the trend line. And you'll miss out on some pretty massive moves if you just get out when it touches the line. And remember, the line also flips. So, like, it would keep trailing it right here and you'd be out and you'd miss out on, like, 20 points of the trade. Now, if you got in here, you'd have moved your stop down. All right. Now, let's look at it. If you got in right here, you don't trail it down until the solid red line gets below your entry. So, on this one, your stop is if it closes above the solid red line on the setup bar. Okay. So, meaning, if I got the early entry, then I'd be trailing as soon as this solid red line got below my entry. Okay? But if I took this entry, 
which more often than not is the entry you're going to take, then I would not have trailed yet. I would still have my stop here. Like, I wouldn't be trailing here. I'd be waiting until this red line... Let me zoom out a little bit. Got below. So I wouldn't even be trailing until this point. Right here, where the red line gets below my entry price. Let's see here, I'm catching up on the questions, making sure I got them all. I know there's a few more still. Yep, so you got it right on that, Joe. Yep, that early entry was one tick below that setup bar. So if you do an early entry, this is a good question. If you do an early entry, where is your stop at? It'll be, you have to wait, put it about five points above the high of the bar. And you have to wait until this next one closes. And then you'll be like five points above that and if it closes above that line. So if you do an early entry, you have to wait for the red line to flip and get above the dotted line. That's a great question, Michael. Let's see here. So as far as knowing which setup trick, like which simplicity traits to enter, you can enter the ones that I call when I call them in the room. Also, I have other webinars on them. So I highly recommend watching them because they tell you which ones to definitely not enter. And look at for ones off levels. And look at the general trend in the market, what's going on. I, I talk about a lot of stuff about that. And I go into a lot of depth on targets at Reading the Market, me, John, and Lori do training in the Sharpshooter course. So there's a link on it on Step 16. And that is a course I highly recommend if you're serious about doing simplicity that you take the Sharpshooter course. So yeah, these are the only two, David. I think I got your question on that. You can wait until you have a sniper entry. Once there's a valid simplicity entry. Or you could just take a pure simplicity entry. It does take more reading of the market. So the question is, can I just do I can I just enter on this chart alone? Yes, but it takes more reading of the market. That's why I keep talking to y'all. I put a big push when I went over a lot of, I went over like 12 rules to, you know, be aware of about the sharpshooter course. Let's see. Question by Mark. The angle of the lines doesn't matter on the entry bar. Correct. The angle of the lines doesn't matter on the entry bar. They matter on the setup bar. Because they can go up and down, up and down. That is correct. So they don't have to be angling up for a long trade. So set up wick bar is not considered to take trade on next bar. So set up wick, set up bar wick. The set up bar wick is considered because it's a tick below the low. So the low may have a wick or it may not have a wick. If it has a wick, then the low is, you know, on the bottom, then the low would be the wick. If the high had a wick, then the high would be the top of the wick. Does it have to close breaking the low or just break the low? It just has to break the low of the setup bar. It does not have to close. It's like where I have those blue dots. It's like where you would enter on the next bar if it breaks the low. So did I have a level it would go to in mind? Yeah, let's back up. So, my main target rate was this dynamic magnet. I get the setup process. I don't understand what market conditions would trigger a setup bar order. Is there a webinar recording with this info? Yes. Go to section 16 and I have webinars step by step on the know, how to know which ones to take and not take. 
and I dive, we dive into it a lot deeper in the sharpshooter course. If I use the TA and you make a trade prior to making a simplicity trade, make sure your ATM is set up to none. That is correct, because you don't want an ATM to knock you out of the trade. So, though, if you got an ATM long, like a number four long, that might be a reason you might want to get out of the trade. Your entry is below the wick of the setup bar, correct? One tick below it. On 659, let's see here. Well, I wasn't awake then, so that's why I didn't take 659, but we can go back to 659. Let's see here. Actually, there would have been, you would have had a lot of room. You're going for big moves. You're going right into a flux pivot. So if you would have entered, you would have entered right here at 653. You wouldn't have waited till 659. And you've been going right into a flux pivot. So you'd be asking for trouble on that. Notice how it oscillated a long time. I mean, you it would have been profitable. Still, I mean, you wouldn't have got out till like here. But the trade would have been back here. It would have been it over here. So define early entry again, please. Yeah, the early entry is when it's right when. these two lines flip over. So we went from red to green and notice how the red line, the solid line is under the dotted line. That would be an early entry. Often that entry will pull back and go down. So it's not always your best entry, but that is an early entry. It's, it's before the solid line is went above the dotted line for short or before the, dotted, the solid line has went below the dotted line for a long. So James says, uh, he's new here, so it feels a little bit beyond him. I totally agree with you. So this is a review webinar. Um, and stick around because, you know, you'll pick up some tips. But in section 16, if you sign up for apexinvesting.com forward slash boot camp, okay, then on step 16 of the sniper page, I walk through this like literally insanely slow. And I go through it all. On the candlesticks, is the open and close different on green and red bars? Um, yes, on a candlestick, your open is going to be the bottom and your close is going to be the top. But your high and low is still your high and low, including the wick. On a red, on a red bar, your open is going to be the top and your close is going to be the bottom. So that's how I know that was an up close bar because that was the open and that was the close. This is how I know this is a down close bar because that was the open and that was the close because it's red. see here how do I get that section that you're talking to about this is this course uh, it's free with apexinvesting.com forward slash boot camp James so just go to apexinvesting.com forward slash boot camp free 30 days access no card required and if you're talking about the sharpshooter course then that is a separate course there's a link on it that is a paid course so it's three day live event about where we dive in depth about reading the market. And it's linked under section 16. Let's see, if we missed the first entry, can you speak to how we could re-enter? Um, it's best to take the first entry. I'm just telling you that right now, because the further it goes, you know, the less chance it has of continuing. Uh, but if they crossed over like this and then crossed again, then like you could have got in like another entry potentially. Could have been right here. But see, this is going right into a wall, right? So, but it does have a low ri lower risk entry than the original entry does. It has a lot lower risk entry. So you could have got in one tick below the low of this bar. And then, you know, you would, your stop would have been here anyway. So you'd just be trolling with your stop like that. Um, the stop again for the early entry, yes, it's, it's basically going to be about five points above the high of the bar until 
the very next bar closes. When the very next bar closes, it's gonna be right. It's gonna be the solid line on the bar right after that on their early entry. Can I address the seven twelve candle? Looks to me like it made a setup candle. It did. So we had two a going down. And we made a setup candle, but we did not break the low on the very next bar. So therefore, it's an invalid trade. It's just like a sniper entry where, you know, doesn't have the next bar do the right thing. The next bar has to break the low or it's no longer a valid setup bar. Does that make sense, Rafiki? I know a lot of people, so the question here is, you know, do you recommend trading before the markets open at 9.30? I know a lot of people actually really, really enjoy trading the markets before they open. Because um, they're a little bit more predictable. They get a little crazy for the first 5 to 45 minutes. Um, so if you find the markets are just way too crazy for you, I mean, this morning even, like, after the market opened, I didn't touch the market for a while. I finally did. I finally got back in, but I said, sit on your hands because it was flying insanely fast. I mean, it, it would it would go 20 points, 30 points in seconds. So I was like, just leave it alone. Don't touch it. Sit on your hands right now. It's too fast. By the time you get in, it could go the other way 20 points. So, um, so even though the... Uh, Bar at 725-ish. Let me go here to 725-ish. Candle looks to me like a setup candle. Well, you would have wanted... That'd be way too late. So right here, this one. So 723.30. It has valid down red angled lines. Yep, it's the, and it's the first one that got broken by the low. Like this one had down angle, but the low wasn't broken. That's all you gotta get. That's the simplicity part of simplicity is where is your entry, where is your stop, where is your trail? Yep, doesn't matter if it's red or green. Red or green candle is fine. And I mean, today I had a, a great day trading. So these are all the accounts I traded, made over 130 grand. So trading them simultaneously. So just a fantastic volatility day. But I even had to say, I got to step aside. So. Do I ever have bad days? Yes, I do. And usually it's my fault. I'd say it's always my fault when I have a bad day. Because I'm just not making good decisions. We have a current long. Can you speak on this? I'll speak on it, but I'm not going to stay on it. So the current long both angled up right here. So the long would have been right there. You had right to about that dynamic magnet. These are really strong levels you want to watch out for. So right to that dynamic magnet and that probably would have been your target. So else you would have just got out right there because it closed below the solid red line. All right, Gerald, does that help out? Yeah, so this would be a trade that you've been like, if I'm going to get in this trade, I'm getting out like a tick before this line. This dynamic magnet line. The nice thing is it was coming off of a wall. So, you know, you go back down here. Both are angling up right off of the flux pivot. Do you see that? Which is the blue line there. So you get in. 
right there. So when it went up, what do you think I'm targeting on this long trade? Where would I where would I have targeted? What do y'all think? You can target the wall. If you wanted to go for a further target, because by this time you've moved your stop up pretty close. Then the next one would be the dynamic magnet. Yeah. So it's the gold lines are dynamic magnets and the blue lines on my chart are flux pivots. So it goes right up there and then boom. So I want to make sure I have some room to tighten up and I, you know, would have had room by the time I moved up here, I could have tightened up. We'll go over here. Let's look at this short. This short is, I mean, literally on the wall. So I would have had to be targeting down here right so that would have been a little bit more rough now I think this could be a good example let's say you took this trade okay and in the middle of it you got a long entry here before it even hit the stop it's like right there You got a long entry right here. What do you think? Wait until it hits the stop or just hop in and go the other way and then get out when it hits that wall? Ah, there you go. Good. That's the setup bar. Well, Y'all are doing good. So y'all are doing very good on that. So a short right there. That have been your target. You've already made it like half. Look at this move too. We've already made it like halfway down between this point and this point of the target. See, I'll see how that's pretty late into the game, and that's one of the things I talk about in the other webinars is being really late into the move. Yeah, that's a good example. Marco says, sort of like trading in the middle of a range. That's I mean, that really is like trading in the middle of a range. So that really wouldn't have been, you know, the one you wanted. And now, there was a early setup right here that you could have taken, but still pretty late in the game. Okay, and that wouldn't have been a horrible entry, but let's just let's say you took this early entry right here. Your stops right here, okay. After that bar closes, and then you get a long. Where do you think that's gonna go? Do you think you should just hold out, or do you think maybe just hop in, go the other way, target the dynamic magnet, pretty much make back what you just lost? What do y'all think? Because you can either hold on to it. We can hop in and ride it back up to the dynamic magnet. What do you think is the better choice if you get a signal in the opposite direction? And that can be hard to do, right? Because you're mentally, you're stuck in this, it's got to go short. I got to be right. I got to be right. If I take a loss, that means I was wrong. No, it doesn't. It just means the market was with the other way. So exactly, trade what you see, not what you think. So, if you see an entry going the opposite way, and it looks like, I mean, it's going to go right to a target, like just hop out of it and right back to the target and make back, you know, some or all of that. Not with the whole mindset of I got to make it back, but it just makes more sense to do it. Now, let's also take one other piece that you may not have noticed. If you would have taken the early entry, where would your stop have been at?
Well, your stop would initially have been here, but where would it have been when this red line came down here? It would have moved down, right? So wouldn't your stop have actually have been like to get out right there on that bar? Sort of hard to see that, but like right there when it closed it when this red green bar closed above it would you have got out right there and what would have happened how much would you have lost on that trade or it's break even and then you got along you took it and now you made something as long as you weren't greedy <laughs> Or you made like a tick if you didn't just take it off when it hit the dynamic magnet. So do y'all see why it's real important to know where to trail your stop to? Because that would have got you out of that trade and allowed you to get into another one. Now this one only had a few points to go and I like to have like, you know, five, ten points to go. I, you know, closer to ten points to go when I'm taking a simplicity trade. But, you know, right there is a setup. And you may have, with that drawdown, you may have actually got a, you know, maybe a sniper entry, who knows. All right, so I want to stress a point. So we got that one. And then right over here, we're... We'll get out a potential reversal long, not too late into it. But let's see, what do we got? No, no setup, setup, but no break. Setup didn't break. That setup right there, that one broke. Right? So if you would have taken that entry, then you would have got out right here. We'd have had like a four or five point loss. Okay. Now, what about down here? Do you think you want to take a trade going into one, a rose colored wall, which is one of the strongest walls we have? And we're back in major wall territory. Walls, 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 dynamic magnets, ZOI. I, I mean, we're just, we're loaded. Yeah, I mean, and it, things already went way down, hasn't it? Has this trade... Now, there was an entry that you could have got into. But again, you only got a few points until you're running into a bunch of walls. Do you want to take a trade running into a one, two walls, dynamic magnet, flux pivot, wall? And I mean, it could have worked out for you, but was it the best trade? So if you would have taken this trade right here on this early entry, then you would have eventually got out right here at the close of this bar when it closed above the line. So you would have made a small profit. But it was it was not the wisest entry. And one of the big things we teach at Apex is not simply knowing when to enter, but knowing when not to enter. So you got to really look at your surroundings. Okay, then the market, you know, we're going into pre-market. And I caught this one. And I mean, it was like right there on the line. And I actually ended up staying in this trade. I caught that one way down. I got sort of lucky because I looked away. And then by the time I looked back, it just turned right around on me. Uh, but then we had a short coming back down and it was still going into some territory I wasn't super comfortable with so but right here and this one I'm going to call more of a lucky trade because I mean it broke that by a tick coming off that so I'm like at least we can make it down to the dynamic magnet we made it down to it fluctuating and I should have gotten out right there at break even I got lucky. 
like I said, I was chatting in the room or something, and then was able to write it on down. And I mean, it went way, way down, and I got out at the flux pivot. Like, I rode this thing all the way down to here. So that was part of why I made so much today. Now, all of this looks great, but I want you to understand, when the market opened, let's see here, we gotta get to the open, but we'll, and we'll get to that in a second. Sorry, I thought we were at 9.30. So now we're in multi-wall territory. Are you gonna take this long, again, in, like right in the middle of all the walls? You're not going to see the magnets on the charts in the room because they're not drawn there. You got to draw them on your own charts. So not happening, right? What about this short? You taking it? I mean, it was a beautiful one, but are you taking it? No. Still in the middle of all these walls. You got a long right here going right into the flux pivot just a few points away. Is that really your best setup? You got a wall with a, with a flux. I mean, you're only going to go for a few points. I mean, maybe you can scalp it, but it's not one of those ones you're really going to want to hold on to. Goes up. That comes back down over here. This looks like a pretty good setup. What do y'all think? Angling down. Low's broken. You got room. That's a good setup. It didn't work out. But it was a good setup. You would have got out right over here. Do you, get, do you sit there and do you whine that you lost on the trade? No, you just go to next trade. Now, if you're trading with full-size contracts and you haven't taken some of these big gains, that's going to hurt. Okay? So what do I tell you to do in one of the webinars that I did like two weeks ago? What did I tell you to trade with on these? Until you've really built up your account, use micros. I mean, you can use two, three, four micros, but use micros. Trade with micros. I know y'all all want to make a fortune today, but use micros. Build up some cushion. Let it not kill you when it hits you. If you're reeling in pain to your stomach because you lost and you can't trade again, that means you traded too big. You should be able to take the loss. Okay? We got nothing here. We got this one, which didn't even set up till down here didn't set up didn't set up actually we never got an entry to go short because see it never broke the low of the next bar and now we're going into what's about to happen here in about 15 minutes but 9 12 the opens about to happen so I stopped trading because I figure it's just gonna oscillate and it did just oscillate And then it went berserk. I mean, it was flying so fast that I'm like, I'm not trading this. I mean, do you see that? These massive moves? I mean, just to give you an idea, this is 55. That's, that's, that's a, like a, you know, what is that? I mean, it's like over 50 points. Just bam, right there. So I'm leaving it alone until I get to where, you know, it can I mean, I just sat on my hands. I literally told everybody in their room to sit on their hands. This is, what account is this? This is the sim account. It's like, I didn't take that trade. Um, so until things get better, things started to slow down.
And now we got a long going up. Things have slowed down. We're coming off of this flux and dynamic magnet. So there we go. Go up. Like I said, take it just a tick shy of the dynamic magnet. I always like to take a take profit. You know, one, two, three ticks before a level's hit. Because sometimes it doesn't, the market isn't always into exactness. Would y'all agree with that? Like it sometimes just doesn't hit that one extra tick just to spite you. Just like when I say, like, when there's a wall in your way on a sniper trade, take your profit. Like a tick or two before the wall. Or level. So now it goes around. We got a short. Comes down here. If you're still waiting, you're out of the trade. If you took it a few ticks before this, then you're out of the trade. Yeah. So, I mean, this one trade right here got in here on this bar and it went up yeah, 31 points can you use simplicity to pass your lead lieu evaluation I'd say be very careful because you got to be real careful on the drawdowns because it'll jack with your threshold and so when you're using it I'm going to tell you use micros because it's going to draw down, right? I mean, look at these big stops we have. And remember, it, your your drawdown threshold is from the highest point of profit, not where you close the trade. So it goes back over here. This is a short. You could take it, but it's pretty big into the move, but it still has a lot of room. Do we have a lot of room going down here? So you could take this trade, but again, when it gets close to that flux pivot, one of the things you'll hear me say is tighten your stops. Okay? Okay. If I say tighten your stops, that means dotted line. Like you'll hear me say that in the trade room. And I, I and I mean a hard stop when I say that. So what it got out right there. About six points. And even for a, a live account, I'd say use micros. Especially until you get the hang of this. All right, and then we get early angle up, but no entry, 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 no entry. We literally don't even get an entry until here. Do we take that trade? No. Now it took off, but look what it went into. It went into a flux pivot, a wall stack, and massive wall territory, which is not where we want to be trading for big moves. It can happen, but trust me, it can chop the crap out of you. And we don't want to trade in our 50-50 possibilities. We want to trade in our high percent probabilities. So are we taking this early entry short? Still in the wall territory? Yes or no? Are we even looking for a trade right now in the middle of all this? No. Because we're all we're in the middle of all of these walls. Now we're out of the walls. 
We get two angles down. Can we take it? Can we take this short? If it breaks the low. Didn't break the low. Finally, that one breaks the low. So we can take it. We're below the ick. Notice how it went sideways on us. So we're out. We're still in ick territory. And it sort of blew through some of these walls today. But there's plenty of times it didn't. So we're just literally being patient. And you're doing sniper trades during this time. Yeah, you can do your sniper trades during this time. See, it's just oscillating. So now we got one coming back down out of it. But still didn't have, our entry was up here. So we don't take it. Right on these levels. Still just total ick. So for a good chunk of the day, there wasn't much there. Now we got to break down below the levels to where we could target this flux pivot. It's like right there you could have got in. You're looking at this as your target. When that hits, then you can tighten your stop to the dotted line. And you would have got out at about the same price. Yeah, there, actually, you would have got out quite a bit lower. You would have got out down here. Now it's just a lot of ick. Do y'all see why I leave my dynamic magnets on and I don't just delete them off all the time? Like a lot of people, what they delete their dynamic magnets when they roll off. I leave mine on. So we're like, oh, there's too many. Can I delete some? I'm like, well, you can. But they definitely help out. Would you just stay set up for the TA inside all the lines? Inside all the lines, I'm just going to look for regular sniper entries. So let's look at a sniper chart, okay? Let's roll it way back. Now one thing that you're gonna notice, I'm gonna start back here at 9.30 where the market was just flying is you're not going to see a whole lot of setups when the market's going fast because you're not going to get exhaustion. So this morning, like that happened in one second. Notice we're not getting trapped Xboxes. We're not, you're not seeing anything pop up on the detector. So one of the things that I use to help me know when it's time to start trading again, I mean, that's only five minutes of trading. Actually, that's only one minute of trading right there. Okay, now we're at 9.35. Is I start looking to see, like, when is it safe to enter? I start waiting for there to be setups on the charts. And we had to sit there for quite a bit Because, again, this is like a minute. I mean, it was just, you know, most of these moves are happening in seconds. And some days, I mean, we get our first three trades, 
like in the first five minutes of training. Some days you got to just sit on your hands. See, now we got a trapped Xbox with OD. So is that a clue that I could start trading again? Yeah. See, notice that we hadn't had any trapped Xboxes. We had OD Divergence. So, and I believe I called this trade out this morning. Because I called it an OD trade short. And then I wrote it down. And then we're still being patient. Waiting on more trades. And there's just not a lot because it's moving so fast. That's a trapped Xbox, but it did not have OD on it. And I just I want you to see this. So that way you start realizing, okay, I'm looking for trade setups. And that's when I know the market's starting to slow down and get a little more realistic to trade. Because it was explosive this morning. It wasn't just a little bit fast. It was a lot of it fast. I mean, that's 20 seconds right there. Move at 20 points. So almost an OD trade, but wasn't quite. There was a long trade that was HDD. It was 142% greater. And we had room before the dynamic magnet. So we were able to take it. So when we wouldn't have been taking a simplicity trade here, we could take a sniper trade right here. To turn on the percentage of ODD, you go to indicators. And you scroll down. To the oscillation detector. Wherever that's at. Must be not able to find it now. There it is. Oscillation detector. And you put show percentage from previous pivot. Section 3, number 6, into true. You want it to be more than 100%. 100% means equal. You want it to be greater. So, and, I mean, you're just scalping it. You're not going for a big move. You're going right into a dynamic magnet. Just go in there and take it right before that thing. Okay? We've only had two valid trades so far. Now, this one, you would have taken that one, and that one would have got you. trade there so see this what it was flying and that's even if you could have got the trade on so if we go back and look at it I mean that's oh yeah I mean a few seconds there so it's still moving really fast Now, would you have taken this? No, oh, that didn't qualify as an elevator because it already had the chop. See, I'm trying to find just another trade because it was going so fast, and this, this happens on fast days. Yeah, you could have taken this triple dipper right here. Would have taken the profit right before this dynamic mag. Oh, you can take the few that was given. And three out of the last four trades are profitable. The 
but when it's flying crazy, it can be very, very challenging to trade. See, that number four wasn't off of a level, so no trade. So, I mean, like I said, some days we literally get all three of our trades in the first five or ten minutes. Some days you're sitting here a lot longer. Haven't seen a trade. There we go. That one still not a valid trade. That one might have made the money to the tick. That ODD, let's see here. Arg. Where'd it go? It's moving on me. You know what? Open the data box. Control D is how you can open the data box. So what was our low there? Our low was 1063.50, so we would have needed to make it to 1061. Made it to the tick. To the tick. On an ODD trade. Two 300 bar chop, I wouldn't call it that on an ODD. That's more for TXs and double TXs. And notice I'm just like an hour. This is, we're just now one hour into the day. All that scrolling is just an hour. Let's see... I'm going to take it to 11 o'clock and we'll wrap it up. So now this one would have got you if you were staying in there. Now hopefully you're done with your three and done, especially if you got a simplicity. Now here's a good question for you on simplicity. If you make 30 ticks, are you done? Yes. You've hit your profit goal for the day. You are literally done. So you may make one trade and be done for the entire day. And as you go to about 11. And there we have a one last trade that was profitable. So we had a third bar swing, came back, gave you a little bit of a heart attack, and then finished out profitable. All right, so did y'all get a couple things out of today about fast markets and about when not to trade simplicity? And some fine tuning on just making sure you understand the rules, the stops, the trails, the early entries. We haven't put too much time into early entry, so that was a big thing we covered today. So, it was a little bit of, pre-market was a great time to trade today. It was a little bit of, it was tough to trade today because the markets were moving so fast. So, there were some trade setups, but it was not as easy of a day to trade. And that's okay. Remember, different days. And so... In your trade journal, on your 90-day challenge spreadsheet, note that. You know, it was a great early morning, but then markets went really, really fast. Pre-markets are often pretty good. I usually don't trade them because they don't get up, but now that my kids are going back to school, you know, getting up a little earlier. I didn't know it was going to be that great. It just happened to work out well. The 90-day challenge begins now. So if you haven't been doing it, you should start it right now. It's under what's next. 
step four. So you just got to have 30 days of the 90 days. Also, um, we I need to announce a winner um, from our last 90 day challenge that wrapped up. We just haven't had a chance to announce the winner. And the winner for submitting their 90 day challenge spreadsheet, which they get two free months of elite access and they get two hours of one-on-one -on -one with me is Caleb Bartlett. So congratulations to Caleb. He got two free hours of one-on-one -on -one with me and he also gets two months of free elite access and John will be making the adjustments in his account. Uh, and any of you who haven't done that again, start doing it every quarter. We pull it out, whether you've done it for 30 days or 90 days, but we don't get anything out of you doing it, okay? I, I do this as a contest to get y'all excited, okay? Now, I also do contests occasionally where we give away a free month of people who are liking on the Facebook page, sharing posts on the Facebook page, not just the group, but the page as well. Okay, so we have a Facebook group. So inviting friends into the group and liking on our page, facebook.com forward slash Apex Investing, liking post on that and sharing post on that and commenting on post on that, all of those get you entered into like free month giveaways that we do each month. Okay? But the 90 day challenge gets you two hours of one on one and 60 days of free access to the elite membership. Okay, if you win. So the way you win is just enter, and then we just randomly draw somebody. Okay? So, uh, again, congratulations to Caleb, and it sounds like a lot of y'all are telling me that y'all got a lot out of the review today. And, I mean, I charge 250 bucks for one-on-one -on -one session. So that's, you know, 500 bucks plus two free months is $200. So that's $900. A value that we're giving away. The 90 day challenge could be in a SIM account. It could be in a Lilu eval account. It could be a funded account. It could be a live account. Doesn't matter. It's just as long as you're doing it. Awesome. Glad y'all got a lot of that. I'm going to go ahead and cut it off here. We've been going for a little over an hour. And I want to thank you for your time tonight. And I will see you tomorrow morning, okay? Again, check us out at apexinvesting.com forward slash bootcamp to get free access. Where, again, we walk through everything I went through tonight fast. We walk through it slow, step by step. And uh, you get access to the course. And you get access to the training, uh, the the tools and you get access of course to the live trade room where i'm calling out live trades every day thank you very much and y'all have a great night